I'm sure that you've heard of what an Apple Pencil is and how great they are. But there are some other options on Amazon that are all like £30, so why don't people go for that one? Well, let's begin with the features that the Apple Pencil has over this £30 fake one. The Apple Pencil has the ability, or at least the second generation, has the ability to charge on the iPad Pro and the iPad Airs as it connects to the side and starts charging it. However, with the other Pencil, it does use USB-C, which is annoying to constantly have to keep charging it. Another feature that the Apple Pencil has over the other ones is that it has pressure sensitivity. Now, this is important mainly if you're making drawings or paintings on your iPad and Procreate, otherwise it's not that important of a feature. They do both have tilt sensitivity, which is quite cool, but I think pressure sensitivity, in my personal opinion, is more important than tilt sensitivity. Although tilt sensitivity is a cheaper feature and therefore I understand why they've implemented it and not just left it without any features. This next feature is technically a good thing, but it's also a bad thing. The Apple Pencil uses Bluetooth, whereas the other one does not. So if you were trying to save some battery by turning off Bluetooth on your iPad, you wouldn't be able to use the Apple Pencil, whereas with the other one, you'd still be able to use it. The good thing about the Apple Pencil is that if you double tap it, it allows you to access the color palette or to swap between an eraser or pen. If you have an iPad, you most likely want to get the Apple Pencil, not some other random third party one. A lot of people just choose to go with the first party option as it just feels as if the other ones are going to fail on their device, which is why most people just go for the first party Apple Pencil rather than the other competition. Battery life is really important when it comes to anything to do with tech and, well, the Apple Pencil supports up to 12 hours of battery life, according to Apple anyway. Although I haven't had the problem of low battery as a lot of the time it's always on the iPad. So whenever I'm not using it, it always charges up to 100% before I use it again. So I don't tend to go under 70 or 60% that often because it's always charging. Whereas when it comes to the other one, it says up to 10 hours. And since it doesn't charge at all until you plug it in, it's gonna die sometimes while you're using it. The biggest advantage with the third party one is that it's only 30 pounds. This is a huge advantage, think about it. You're saving 90 pounds for buying something which has one or two less features and is only third party. It's quite a hard decision because first party is something that you know is definitely reliable and the warranty tends to be easier to deal with. And yes, there are those extra features. The price isn't the only thing. It comes with all those tiny little accessories. It comes with a free extra pouch, which you can attach to the back of your iPad if you want. It even comes with an extra tip. So if yours starts wearing away, you can replace it. And it's supported with a lot more iPads. So it doesn't just work with the iPad Pro. It allows it to work with a lot of different range, including like the regular iPad. Okay, now one of my favorite features with the Apple Pencil is Scribble. And yes, they both support Scribble, which is a great thing in my opinion, since you won't have to get the Apple Pencil to use Scribble. They both have at least one flat side, and I know what people are thinking. The first Apple Pencil didn't have it, so why does the second one have? Well, if you think about it, let's say you had your pen and you put it down on a desk. If it's completely circular, it'll just roll off and fall off. That's why it's better to get one with at least one flat side like the Apple Pencil or the other one which has multiple flat sides so that when you put it down, it doesn't keep rolling till it falls off the table. It also supports palm rejection, which is a pretty cool feature but isn't that hard to implement as it is in Apple software. So which is the better one? Well, it's obviously going to be the Apple Pencil because it's £90 more than the other one, but the £30 one is really good, especially if you want to get your money's worth. However, with the Apple Pencil, it's first party, like I said, which would definitely sway a few people towards it, but the £30 one is definitely worth it. The final decision's obviously up to you, so I've left both the links in the description, one of which is an affiliate link, so I get a commission, more details on that will be in the description, and if you enjoyed that video, please leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos. Thanks for watching.